Hello brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me for another video series titled Don't Get It Twisted. This one is a Bible study and commentary on the book of Colossians along with a few other verses that we're going to delve into and focus on here as the body of Christ to armor up the body. The first verse I want to begin with is actually not at the beginnings of Colossians, but it's Colossians verse 2 or chapter 2 verse 18. This verse is a word from Paul that he wrote to the church at Colossians and Colossae. He says, don't let anyone disqualify you from your prize. Don't let their pretended sincerity fool you as they deliberately lead you into their initiation of angel worship. For they take pleasure in pretending to be experts of something they know nothing about. Their reasoning, their reasoning is meaningless and comes only from their opinions. They refuse to take hold of the true source. The true source is Jesus Christ, of course. And that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about true followers of Christ and what kingdom talk looks like and also how you can differentiate between people who are saying they are Christians but truly aren't following in the walk. So we've noticed a lot over the past probably 10 years especially so there's been so many false shepherds and false teachers that even the, 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 the church has become deceived and there's a lot of lukewarm members in the church and they don't really receive the fullness of Christ and they can't because they're relying on a false Jesus, their false image of what their false teachers have told them. So we're going to go to the scripture and I'm going to help my brothers and sisters to armor up against these. And then also for anyone who's been led here to, to hear this word, the, the lessons in this that the Father's teaching us is how to stand in the authority of Christ. But first we have to understand who Christ is and where that authority comes from. So we're going to delve in into this multi-part series. And so the beginning of this chapter is Paul, and he's, of course, writing to these members of this church. And you'll remember that Paul's ministry was he was sent to to talk to the Gentiles, to convert them, to, to teach them about Jesus Christ. So he was a Hebrew, an Israelite, and he also, the, therefore, was called, though, the, the Father called him to preach to the Gentiles. So this is how the, the word begins. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of our God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and all of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the father which hath made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption We've been set free through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Okay. So we're going to stop right there and we're going to start the commentary. We're going to start the commentary. So we read to verse 16 
almost to 17. We'll go on to 17. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things he might have preeminence. Okay, so this, the first half of this first chapter is speaking of the preeminence of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who through his blood, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We've been set free. Okay. So it's very key to understand that as followers and believers on Jesus Christ, we are free of the things of this world. Okay. We are absolutely free of them. It says right there, right there. It says we are, we're free. So as believers in Jesus Christ, it's, it's very important that you understand that there are judgments going out across the world and there are plagues and many different things happening. And you need to understand that these are judgments and they are for the unrighteous. So one thing to make note is that many, many people are being told they must wear a mask. They're going to catch the COVID-19. They're going to catch coronavirus. They're going to die. You need to understand something. All things are under his feet. All things. It says it right here. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Okay? A virus is invisible. You need to grab hold of this and understand. What's happening with the lukewarm church is they're being things are being taught to them and said to them through unrighteous preachers and unrighteous teachers. And so they're not receiving the fullness of Christ, the fullness of the word. You are not appointed to wrath. You are not appointed to wrath when you receive Jesus Christ. What do you do when they say, well, the science says, or Dr. Fauci, or this person. You go to the scripture. We, we go to the scripture. This is our word, okay? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. So kingdoms, presidents, CDC, who, the UN, says right there, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, everything on the earth must submit to Jesus Christ. There all things were created by him and for him, all things. So we don't have a fear of things. All things are created for him and by him. Everything, it says right there, created by him and for him. So therefore, there's nothing on this planet that are not underneath the feet of Jesus Christ. So you're going to have some believers say to you, or some, I want to say, I'm going to, I must quit using the word believer. I'm going to start saying there some in the Luke worm church will say to you, well, the Bible says not to test the Lord thy God. This is not testing the Lord thy God. This is a matter of studying to show thyself approved. For had they studied and showed themselves approved, they would know that they are not appointed to plex. It's simply that simple. We have to stand on our authority that is in the word of Christ. Okay, it's in the word right here. Now, it says right here, we're delivered from the power of darkness and we're translated into the kingdom of his dear son. That doesn't say that we will be translated. It says we are translated. We, we are seated in heavenly places. Therefore, nothing on this earth has any authority over us. Let's go on. So it says here that he is the head, that Jesus Christ is the head of the body. And he's the head of the church, who is the beginning. He's the firstborn from the dead. And, in, and, and he's the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. He has preeminence in all things. The Father has given it to Jesus Christ. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. It pleased God Almighty that in all fullness would dwell in his son Jesus Christ. That's what pleased God. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to unite all things unto himself by him i say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven so the father through the son through the blood of the cross is uniting all things reconciling all things to himself whether the things are in earth or in heaven okay all things it doesn't say some things it says all things and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now he hath reconciled What's being said here is to us, the believer, you yourself were alienated and were enemies to Christ. You were aliens from Christ. You were enemies. But now he's reconciled you. How were you reconciled? You received Jesus Christ fully. Now, why do I come to here and stop? 
Some people believe they've received Jesus Christ fully and they haven't because they're walking in fear. They believe that they can die from something and so therefore they're trying to protect their life through a vaccination. Those who seek to save their life will lose it. That's what the scripture says. Okay, these are principalities of darkness who are lying to you. Just like it says right here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't let anyone disqualify you from your prize. Don't let their pretended sincerity fool you as they deliberately lead you into their initiation of angel worship. Their angel worship. They worship medicine and science. That's what they're telling you. You need to worship what we say. For they take pleasure in pretending to be experts of something they know nothing about. Right there, the Father says they don't know anything that they're talking about. Their reasoning is meaningless and only comes from their opinions. They refuse to take hold of the true source. Amen, hallelujah. They do refuse to take hold of the true source. The true source is Jesus Christ. In him through all truth flows. All truth. Not Dr. Fauci, not the president, not your government, not your mayor, not, not, not the person. No one. Not the Pope, not your priest, not the Archbishop, Archbishop, not your lady preachers, no one, no one. It says right there, they refuse to take hold of the source. They're refusing to take hold of the power of Christ. That's what it says. And if you keep listening to them, you're going to be disqualified. You're going to lose your prize. That's what's going to happen to the lukewarm church. Not to the bride, but to the lukewarm church. Now, it says, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So, right here it's saying, he made peace through the blood of the cross by him, by him, to reconcile all things unto himself, us, to, to reunite us to the Father. Because some sometime before that we were alienated and in sin and we were enemies to the cross. Okay, we had wicked works of the mind. Yet now he's reconciled us in the body of his flesh through death to present us holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Okay. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Okay. Paul's the minister and he's saying to them right there, if you continue in the faith, if you're firm, if you stand firm in it and you stand settled and you don't be moved away from the hope that you have in Christ Jesus of the gospel and it's been preached to every creature on the earth, then you'll be fine. That's what it's saying right there. You, right there. If you continue, you, you will be presented, presented holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight by the blood of Jesus. Now let's stop for a moment. What does that look like? Well, you probably, as followers right now and believers on Christ, you're seeing a lot of lukewarm church denying this very thing. They're not continuing in the faith. They're not grounded and settled. And they are moved away from the hope they have in Christ Jesus. They are moved away from the hope. They're completely moved away from it because it says right here, all things are under his feet. Everything right here. They're, don't listen to them. It says, uh, he is, let's see, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. So the power of death, the power of COVID, the power of Corona, the power of the economy, all of it, all of it. It's right there. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, then he will present through his death, Present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight to the Father. That's the goal of the Holy Spirit. That's the, that's the power of the Holy Spirit to present us. Now, I need you, lukewarm church, to answer yourself this question. How is the Holy Spirit going to present you not reproved at all, unblameable and holy in front of the Father when you are admitting to a fear of death and you're allowing someone to take your prize because you believe that you're going to die? from an illness because they told you and because the CDC presented the facts. The CDC is this group right here. Don't let their pretended sincerity fool you as they deliberately lead you into their initiation of angel worship. What does that look like right now in, in real time? Bill Gates telling you that you, you, you need a vaccine. Dr. Fauci telling you need three masks. Them telling you this. They're, it says right there, their reasoning, reasoning is meaningless and comes only from their opinions. 
This is what the Father told Paul to tell us. These are dominions and powers. Okay? Their opinions are meaningless. That's all they are, opinions. It says right there. Their reasoning is meaningless and comes only from their opinions. They refuse to take hold of the source. Just like the lukewarm church. They refuse to take hold of the source, the power of Jesus Christ. They're refusing. Let's move on. Paul then goes on to say that I now rejo I rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. The church, the body of believers, is the church. So the body of believers that believe on Jesus are called the church. Now, the lukewarm church is the church that's been in the mega churches and they've just been mispreached to, mistaught, and they believe a lot. And so they're lukewarm. They kind of believe in Jesus, but not the whole truth of it. So they're lukewarm. They're not hot and they're not cold. So the cold group is the ones that don't believe in Jesus at all. And the hot are those that are on fire for Christ. The lukewarm, eh, they believe the general story. They have Jesus. And if they take a vaccine, they'll just ask Jesus to forgive them. They'll just ask Jesus to forgive. They'll just apply the blood to it. If they listen to heretics, they'll just apply the blood to it. Listen to that. How could you be listening to a heretic and how could you be modifying your genetic makeup and then applying the blood of Jesus to it? When you have Jesus, the Holy Spirit would stop you from doing those things. You... You've got to understand the power and might of the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't say, I'm going to just apply the blood of Jesus and do whatever I want. That's not walking in covenant with God. That's why the lukewarm church is so weak. That's why they don't know that they're supposed to discern and judge within. That's why they can't recognize wolves without that are in sheep's clothing. They cannot discern at all because they don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. Why don't they have the power of the Holy Ghost? Because they continue to deny the power of God. So much so that they will go and take a vaccine because someone's told them they can't have a job or they may not get to see their grandkids or they might die if they get this corona, coronavirus. Lies. They receive lies. What the CDC said, well, this person said, well, Dr. Fauci said, well, Bill Gates said. What did God say? What did God say? That's the, When you receive Jesus, you live your life based on what God said. You can't say you receive Jesus and then you're getting all your other, getting your, getting your facts from the right there. Thrones and dominions and principalities and powers of darkness. That's where your truth is coming from. That's why you can't discern. These things are discerned by the spirit. They can't be discerned by the natural man. So he says he's made a minister. And he said he's made a minister even of the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations. But now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's the mystery. Christ is in you. That's, that's the mystery right there. Then he says, whom we preach. Because Paul preached Christ crucified. That was, that's what Paul preached. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. That we may present every man mature in Christ Jesus. That's the goal. To present mature believers to Christ. Help, and, and the whole body, the whole body of Christ is responsible for this. Some are teachers, some are exhorters, some are preachers. We are all called to do this. We are called and empowered by the Holy Spirit to do exactly what I'm doing right here: to rebuke the lukewarm, to rebuke the heathen, to rebuke the infidel, to rebuke the heretic. I see a lot of lukewarm church saying, "Who are you to judge? Judge not, lest ye be judged." That is your job in the church to discern who among us is a wolf. And to hear you say, who are you to judge, tells us right away, you are not a child of Zion because you haven't studied to show yourself approved. Come on, brothers and sisters, get it together. Get it together. He says, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Okay? Then he says, for I would have you know that of the great conflict that I have for you and for those at Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches, riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid 
all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. They're hidden in Christ Jesus. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your discipline and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Stop right there. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, after the principles of the world, and not after Christ. Okay? So, for in him, in Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Okay. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When we receive Christ, we are circumcised from this life, from these rulers. We're buried with him in baptism. Everything that has to do with this system, we are risen with Christ. It has nothing to do with this any longer. Not at all. Okay? We are, we, we're, we're dead in our sins and Christ is alive in us. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We received Jesus. Jesus is inside of us. We're now dead. He's alive in us. We're circumcised to that old person. That, that person's dead. Now, I have a question for the lukewarm church. If you're dead and Christ is alive, with, alive in you, why are you trying so hard to save your life and so worried with your mask? I mean, washing everything, might get coronavirus, not going to die, because that's what the principality of darkness told you. So it says right here, you're buried with him in baptism, and you're risen with him through the faith and the operation of God. That's what God's doing. You're circumcised because you took on Christ. You took on Christ, okay? It says it's blotting out. So this is what happened. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he made alive together with him, Having forgiven you all trespasses. He's bl he blots out the handwriting, which is the bond of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Okay, so he's blotting out the bond. What bond is that? That's the bond. We're born in sin. When we leave heaven and we come to earth, we're born in sin immediately. And until we receive Christ, we can't be recovered. Okay, we're automatically headed to hell. Headed for death until we receive Christ and His washing and His covering. That's when we that's when we're circumcised with Christ, and then we're buried in the baptism with Him and we rise with Him. We're dead; He's alive in us. Okay, so you need to understand something. When He's blotting out these these bonds, they're the bonds to the enemy, to anything that says you owe them anything or you have to do anything, anything of this world, all of it. He blotted it all out by the power by this circumcision. Okay. It's, a, it's not a circumcision of the body. It's of the heart. It separates. That's it. It's done. You no longer belong to the beast system. You no longer belong to the devil. You no longer are headed to hell. You're, all those things are dead. So why is it you're so worried to hang on to life? So it says that he blotted out this bill, basically this bond that calls for your life to death. And it says, and he spoiled principalities and powers. <coughs> he made a show of them openly triumphing over them how was he triumphant when he came and he hung on the cross that covered us we were our, we were destined for death from the day you're born you're dying and, and everyone is headed to hell every single person every single person until they receive christ and they understand that they that only christ can get them out of it he that, that's what he's done he spoiled the principality and powers because they keep telling you you're consigned to death you're going to starve, this, this, that, or the other thing's going to happen to you. Because they've got you convinced that they're in charge. It's all a principality. It's all a lie. Okay, so we're going to pause right there for a second because I want to, I don't want to make this video so long. But I want to, um, I want to state again for, um, for the group and for the lukewarm to understand 
You are allowing this nation, these rules to disqualify you from your prize. You're letting their pretended sincerity fool you. Oh, the COVID numbers are up. Oh gosh, somebody got sick. All these people died. I want to make it very clear to you just so you understand. You cannot continue to spread lies about CDC facts that they told you they're facts because the father's already told you they're lies. They're from the dominion of hell. That's it. The principalities of darkness, the powers that be, the kingdoms. He's already said they are all liars. All Let all men tell a lie. That's what it is. All men lie. Okay? So you cannot be spreading that. They have deliberately led you into their initiation of angel worship. What does he mean by angel worship? The fallen angels who are in charge of this planet, who run everything. You're worshiping everything they say. You've been led into the angel worship. It says, for they take pleasure in pretending to be experts of something they know nothing about. Amen, hallelujah. They know nothing about God's creation. They know nothing about the children of Zion. They know nothing about the fact that the wrath is appointed to them, not God's children. They pretend to be experts. Their reasoning is meaningless and comes only from their opinions. They refuse to take hold of the true source. But we, the children of Zion, receive directly from him and his life supplies vitality into every part of his body, the body of Christ. Through the joining ligaments connecting us all as one, he is the divine head who guides his body and causes it to grow by the supernatural power of God. Amen. Alleluia. For you were included in the death of Christ and have died with him to the religious system and powers of this world. Don't retreat back to being bullied by the standards and opinions of religion. Do you see this? Don't retreat back to being bullied by the standards and opinions of religion. Okay? He doesn't want you to retreat back. This is your power. This is your authority that you have in Christ against principalities. Stand in truth. You've got, you've got somebody's telling you, um, what, what business is it you, of yours to judge? Here's Paul's response to that. For what business is it of mine to judge outsiders, those outside the church? Is it not for those inside the church you are to judge? God will judge those outside of the church. Then it goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, God will judge those outside of the church. Expel the wicked person from among you. We are kings and priests, royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession, a chosen people. I need you to hear that. When the lukewarm church is saying to you, who are you to judge? Well, my mother, my mother said this person's a godly person. Well, I don't think this person's a heretic. This is what the word says. It says we are kings and priests. We're royal priests. We're a holy nation unto God. A holy nation unto God. God's very own chosen. His very own possession. We're a chosen people. We are called to judge inside the church. If you cannot discern inside the church who's wicked, who, who the wolves are, that are in you know shepherds clothing they look like sheep there's they're false shepherds if you can't now discern that means you're not operating in the power of the holy spirit it's an operating in the power of the holy spirit because if you hear another person say who are you to judge you should know the scripture that says you are called to judge inside the church those that are within those that are within those that are within now how is it that there's this many lukewarm and how disturbing is it for us to be around these lukewarm and do we now have to separate ourselves from them? Yes, we do. The father is separating the sheep and the sheep and the goats and the rams. And we're going to go into that a little later in the series, but that's what he's doing. So what happened with the sheep? How come some sheep aren't don't seem to be sheep? How come they're not walking out the truth? How come they're arguing against the word of God? Here is what the scriptures say in 1 John 2.19. For even though they were once a part of us, they withdrew from us because they were never really of our number. For if they had truly belonged to us, they would have continued with us. By leaving our community of believers, they made it obvious that they never really belonged to us. That's why you have the lukewarm church. This is a group of people that don't really belong to the fellowship of Christ. They have some argument, something that argues against the fullness of Christ. Well, but but I could get sick. Well, you don't know. I know these people that died of coronavirus. Well, this happened with the coronavirus. Well, you know, this happened and that happened. 
We don't care. We're the children of Zion. We do not care about the lies of the system, nor do we spread the lies of the system. So this is for every child on this planet that continues to spread the lies of the devil, which is what it is. It's their opinions. Right there, he says it right there, pretending to be experts. How can you as a believer actually think Dr. Fauci is an expert on your immune system that Christ made inside of you? Can you see how the spirit on you is arguing against Christ? Do you not see it, brothers and sisters? Do you not see it? Or dare I call you, brothers and sisters? Are you working for the deceiver? At this point, it's time the brethren stand up. It's time the true ecclesia stand up and start calling out the lukewarm church for exactly what's going on. That's what we have to do. So we're going to pause at the fact right here. Jesus spoiled the principalities and powers and he made a show of them openly triumphing, triumphing over them in it. Amen. He has those who have received Christ. They are in triumph. They recognize this whole system. The Holy Spirit shown them exactly what's going on. So we're going to pause there. And we'll go to the next video and we're going to continue in this in this reading of Colossians. Okay? Good evening.